الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين وصلى الله على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين بالقاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله أنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا الله صل أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وقوله الحق وهو أصدق الصادقين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذ ابتلى إبراهيم ربه بكلمات فأتمهن قال إني جاعلك للناس إماما قال ومن ذريتي قال لا لا ينال عهد الظالمين صدق الله العلي العظيم Tonight is the 15th of the holy month of Ramadan and the milad and viladat of Imam Hasan al-Mushtaba alayhi salatu was salam My congratulations to you all and we were expecting a bigger crowd but we have to just live with what we have so <clears throat> i just read to you the ayat uh, 124 of surah baqarah where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa id ibtala ibrahim rabbuhu uh, when the lord tried ibrahim alayhi salam with certain words and he completed them he fulfilled them then the the lord said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said surely certainly I am appointing you for the people as an imam and he said Ibrahim alayhi salam said wa min dhuriyati what about my progeny my offspring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said la yanalu ahd zalimi this position this I have this covenant will not be uh, re- uh, reached by the evil doers by the oppressors <clears throat> in the islamic philosophy and also in the light of quran and hadith imamat is a has a very distinct position and imamat is a, a rank which is higher than nubuwwat i will translate uh, i will just uh, mention some of the points regarding this ayat karima Ibrahim alayhi salam at an advanced age goes from nubuwwat to risalat then he was tested by Allah through certain words kalimatan and he could fulfill them now it may be the test of the sacrifice of his son where you know Quran mentions that Ibrahim alayhi salam saw that he is slaughtering his son and so he meant, mentioned that to Ismail alayhi salam and they both went and the, the, that account of history is known to all of us and uh, followed by that there is a belief that followed by that this uh, ayat was uh, uh, this ayat refers to that event that after that Allah offered him, gave him the position of imamat. Naturally, if uh, he was already a Nabi, already a Rasul, imamat was given later on. So if he was not demoted, he was promoted to a higher rank. Because by completing this, this test, he was given a higher place. When you complete a test and you fulfill a test, you don't get demoted, you don't lose a rank, you gain a rank. So gaining a rank over Risalat and Nubuwat means that Imamat is a higher rank than Nubuwat. And I would request that in the middle of the program, please don't say Salaam, although I love to hear Salaam from people, but it just distracts us. So please just do not say Salaam when you enter. Okay, Qala wa min What about my offspring? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this position of imamat will not be achieved, will not be acquired by the zalimin. Zalimin is a person, zalimin is a plural of zalim. Zalim is an oppressor. 
an unjust person. Unjust people will never become imams. What is the meaning of unjust person? An unjust person can either be a person who was unjust in the past, or is unjust now, or will be unjust in the future, or all of these. Right? But this ayah says all the unjust people, anyone who has done injustice in his life is not worthy of reaching the position of imamat. Therefore, anyone who has any stain in his life of any zulm, any oppression to himself, herself or anyone else will, is not worthy of achieving the rank of imamat. Of course, this itself shows that uh, many many points which just came, you know, in the course of the discussion that it is a rank higher than Nabuwat. Yes, we believe, strongly believe that Imamat was a position shared by the Holy Prophet of Islam, Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma sallam. Just as Ibrahim alayhi salam was Imam and Rasul, the Holy Prophet of Islam was also an Imam and a Rasul. Highest of all the, the prophets and shared by the Ayyama Tahirin, Min Wulde Fatima of Ali, alayhi salam, who were from the line of uh, the daughter of the Holy Prophet. In the light of uh, alaykum salam, a rational you know, analysis of, uh, of uh, leadership and imamat, we also see that. The human beings need a perfect exemplar whose knowledge of reality is absolute. That means he, in his thinking, he, he makes no errors. And in his actions, you know, he does not make any errors, no mistakes in actions. And in the past also, from from the times of Greek philosophers, they believed in a philosopher king, you know, a philosopher who should rule. And that's what they mean. The king is a word that's misleading. A ruler, administrator should be a philosopher, a hakim. And a hakim is a person who, whose knowledge is, you know, completely uh, corresponds to reality. He does not make any error in understanding. And similarly, in his practical decisions, right, in understanding, he does not uh, experience any doubts or confusion, right? Now, one way to achieve that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give the knowledge of reality to the person, which we call infallible, masum. That means Allah gives this knowledge to a person that this person it has access to all knowledge. This is a hakim in the true sense. Alaykum salam. And then you have that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends him shariat. Right? So he's born with a, a, an eye to the reality. That means born a complete philosopher, hakim. Makes no mistakes in, in, in knowing the facts. Knowing, for example, the aqaid, his aqaid are absolutely right. Can we have some silence, please, brothers, sisters? Similarly, for example, Allah sends down revelation so he knows his duties about everything. Now, in the time where you do not have an Imam Masoom, you do not have a Hakim uh, who, is, who has received revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like the times we live in. In the time of Ghaybat, the Imam is present, we don't see him. Imam is uh, doing what he's supposed to do, but we are blinded because of our own sins and because of our disobedience. Now in these times, what are we supposed to do? We are obviously, our duty is to follow a person who knows hikmat, right? And who knows his duties due through the ishtihad. Because if you are not receiving a wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you must be able to know the shariat and wahi and teachings of Quran and Ahlul Bayt through the ijtihad, 
through ishtihad you know that right so that uh, so going back to the ayat which says that the rank of imamat is higher than nabuwat based on this belief there were there were some who understood this belief therefore after the shahadat of imam amir al mu'minin alayhi salatu wassalam allahumma salli ala muhammad they flocked around imam mushtaba alayhi salam and they did his bayat now those who were doing his bayat few of them really regarded and believed this as a fundamental belief that imamat imam should be a masum imam is a person appointed by allah and prophet and therefore he is wajibul itaat that his itaat is wajib upon me but few were those people very few generally the people respected respected imam mustafa alayhi salam because he said he is the grandson of the prophet right we should see in history that imam alayhi salam he resembled the holy prophet very much his his uh, his personality was very attractive in many ways he used to come out of the house there was a huge crowd of people just waiting there to see him it is mentioned in history that it was so good looking in many ways and that that was it and it is also mentioned that a, an old person uh it was either a jewish person or a christian he was a beggar he was sitting on the side of the street right in front of the imam's house just for money you know begging imam alayhi salam came out uh and imam was uh you know at the height of his youth and uh, wearing very nice clothes he came out and he saw imam alayhi salam and he said i have a question and he said my question is that you all say you you all say that this world is a prison for the believers right and it is a jannat for the kuffar but i see that you are look at my condition and your condition it doesn't seem like it is a prison for you and it doesn't seem like it is a jannat for me i'm a destitute old man nobody cares for me begging for money for for something to buy my food and look at your condition what sort of an answer you would think of giving this, this, this question imam al salam said yes this is true if you knew if you knew what awaits us in the other life you would consider this my prison and if you knew what waits for you over there this is your jannat got the reply of imam al salam salawat it is said that because of the propaganda against imam al salam and this propaganda still continues imam is really mazloom because the kind of things they say about him are not found in books <laughs> and the books by books i mean really like credible sources even the general like compilations in of history you don't find those things over there you find them in sources that are at they are not even considered primary sources of hadith and made up by people and to for us at least we don't trust any hadith which is not from an imam masum for us hadith does not mean some sahaba has, some sahabi has said something we don't even regard, count it as a hadith for us hadith means either the prophet of allah or imam ali and fatima az zahra any of the masumin said something or did something narrated through trustworthy scholars and people who are you know uh, authenticated by the ulama by the imam himself or the consensus of ulama in those times right and and we have a, alhamdulillah a good literature on ilm ar rijal ilm ar rijal is not a subject where our ulama have you know left any stone unturned as they say you know this really really in rijal in the issue of rijal from the start living under persecution the ashab who were narrating from imam there was traditions there were many checks and balances our hadith is a very credible source 
and then people unfortunately listen to things from outside that have no basis in history, no basis in the books of hadith and they assign those things to Imam. Imam was Muslim then because of course Muawiyah was trying his best to bring down the, Imam, the Khilafat of Imam Mushtaba It did not last more than six months. Imam was the one who, uh, who saw that, uh, that Muawiyah sending spies, he challenged Muawiyah. And Muawiyah uh, raised, uh, he basically uh, waged the war. Imam al -Islam sent forces and the situation was, Imam predicted that you all will not be loyal to me. Your promises, you will not keep your promises. The result was that even before an encounter happened, the commanders, they were bribed by Muawiyah, offered 500,000 dirhams, you marry my daughter, you'll give you the vilayat of this place, Sham, I'll give you that. You know, all kinds of promises. And the money that was just like flooding. And Imam knew it. Imam told the people, took bayat from such, took the, you know, promise from such people, commanders in front of the whole army. And still they went and took the money from Muawiyah and went and changed sides, left the camp of, you know, camp, left the army. In such situation, Imam was attacked. Imam used to wear a uh, zira, you know, armor in, under his clothes because b when he wanted to go out for Salatul Jama'ah, he used to wear an armor in his, uh, under his clothes because of the, the extent of danger. Because so many khawarij and munafiqeen and jawasis, you know, spies, had infiltrated into his army. There was no count. It was just all over the place. And they were waiting to basically, that the, when the battle starts, they will basically capture Imam Hushtaba and hand him over. Imam wasalam, knew very well that going any further into this uh, battle means that those few loyal people will get killed. Those few loyal, true Shias, who was the, the real fighting force of Imam would be killed and there will be no future for Islam. Today me and you are talking about him, we will not be there anymore. Because the, the, those who really propagated Imamat were those who, was, who were taught by Imam Ali and Imam Mushtaba. We are talking about early Islam. We are not talking about today. Shia history has been through a lot that we, we, are, we are now in such great numbers. There was a day when Mutawakkil, he, he ordered killing of Alawiyin because Bani Abbas took revenge against Alawi. Bani Abbas were also from Bani Hashim and Alawi for, were from Ali and Fatima, Abdul, uh, Abu Talib, Ibn Abdul Muttalib and Bani Abbas were from Abbas Ibn Abdul Muttalib. So they were both from Bani Hashim. When Bani Abbas came to power, they, they took revenge against Alawiyin which were also, uh, you know, Bani Hashim were from Bani Abi Talib, you know, and, and, and ordered execution of Alawiyin all over the Islamic world. Thousands of Alawiyin were killed in the one day, Iraq and Iran, of those times. You go you visit, you know, Iraq or Iran, you see every few miles of some, some grave of some, like Imam Zad. They were mostly from the time of Bani Abbas, you will see them. And many from the time of Muawiyah also. But Bani Abbas regime, they specially concentrated on Alawiyin. Bani Umayyah were against all the Bani Hashim, right? But Bani Abbas saw the, uh, you know, Bani Alawiyin as their rivals. They saw that this Imamat is continuing in their line. And they saw that Imam Mushtaba al-Islam is worthy of Khilafat. And because of that, the propaganda started. Hassan al -Salam is marrying so many wives, you know, he's got so many. Hassan al -Salam is this, and this, that, all kinds of things. And they brainwashed the people. There's such one person, this accounted that one person from Sham, old person, he, he came to Medina, and he, this moment he saw Imam Mushtawa and, and recognized him, he started slandering him and uh, 
you know, bad mouthing, all kinds of things he said to Imam on the street, in front of everybody. Now, Imam just waited calmly until he was done. Imam al Islam smiled, <laughs> smiled at him. He said, Probably the issue has become confused upon you. If you want us to be pleased with you, we are ready to be happy, show our pleasure with you, you know. Rizayat, even before, he, he said, We are ready to show you, give you our rizayat. If you need money, we can provide you help. If you need a place to stay, we offer you our place to stay. We have a big house as narrated. If you want to keep your stuff somewhere, we have a place you can come. Any other help, we can provide you. The moment Imam finished speaking, this person, imagine you've just insulted someone and this is how he treats you with such grace. So he said, to, he raised his hand and he said, I, I am a witness that you and your family deserve to be the successors of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The propaganda was huge. Just like the, the cam media campaign today against, you know, our ulama, against Wilayatul Faqih, against, you know, everything. The, the amount of propaganda that's happening today, you can, you can see. Turn on the TV and see what they're doing to Islam and Muslims. The kind of legislation is going on around the country right now, affecting Muslims, Muslim communities, Muslim masajid, Muslim organizations, everything that they're doing right now. And especially against the Shia. So today they see that the Shia Muslims, you know, are the true, really, the true uh, picture of Islam. They are presenting Islam. They are away from violence. They are people who are preaching human values, true values, you know. They are the ones who stand by Islam truly, by Islamic principles. They don't just say Allahu Akbar and start beheading people, you know. That which they are doing in Syria right now. They're doing, doing in Saudi Arabia and other places. In the name of Islam, they are doing everything. Such a shame they have brought to Islam all over the world. But what we see is that because of such example, the great example of Imam that See, the, because the, they were such great people, they had to... Uh, basically get into the hadith books and fabricate hadith against them. There was no other way to malign their personality than to uh, make up things against them. And Alhamdulillah, despite all these, our challenges have not just been, for example, challenges on our lives. Challenge, even challenges in terms of for example, fabrication of hadith against Aimma. But Alhamdulillah, because of the, the, the way our hadith literature and ilmul hadith is designed, the way it is researched, you know, there's no, there's no possibility of any of these hadith to, to pass through the screening process. Any of such fabricated hadith, hadith ja'li, maj'ul, to pass the you know, screening test. Everything is clearly screened. The, the, the hadith literature in Shia Islam is a, something of pride of, of Islam. If it was not the hadith of Ahlul Bayt Islam, Islam would not have survived. Imam Islam stood up against Muawiyah, challenged him. There, was, there are so many munazarat and debates. Imam's chivalry and courage in the battle of Jamal, in the battle of Shafin, that Imam Islam charged and attacked the enemy himself. The kind of courage he showed on many instances, wherever. There were times when Imam, Imam Ali alayhi salam, according to some accounts, he asked that Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain would stay behind. Because he said the nasl of Rasulullah must continue. He did that. He, they were fighting so bravely that Imam became concerned that, what if my sons get killed? Because the nasl of the Holy Prophet, the line of Prophet, no zalim can reach the covenant of Allah. No zalim can reach this place of imamat. Imamat is restricted to these people. Restricted. They will find east and north, east, west, south, wherever you want to find one single person who does not have some stain in his character. Where will you find a person who will be impeccable? You know, his character is completely, you know, perfect in all respects. It is because of such perfection that we believe in that imam must be a perfect human being 
that any such hadith basically coming at sh even giving a, an indirect impression that about some flaw in Imam's character we reject it we reject it we don't have we are not short of hadith Alhamdulillah there is no Shia Mazhab is not short of hadith in any way just one book I probably mentioned the other night just one book Biharul Anwar has a hundred thousand hadith in it all the books of hadith of Ahlul Sunnah you gather, collect together, it's not more than 15,000 hadith. Just one collection of Shia hadith is 100,000 hadith. We are not short of hadith in any subject, on any subject. Uh, 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 you know, three centuries of narration of hadith. And Imam salam signed, was forced to sign a, a treaty agreement with, with Muawiyah, right? It was for the sake of the fact that the time has not come for for Karbala. Karbala requires another time. Because the Shahadat must have an impact on the Muslim community. The kind of impact Karbala had on history, right, on the conscience of the society, Imam Hassan's Shahadat would not have had that kind of impact. Basically our Imams being in Masoom, they were receiving Direction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The door of, door of hidayat from Allah to the Imam was open. As long as the Imams were there, even today, Imam is present, he is connected to Allah. Allah speaks to him and he speaks to God. You know, Allah never closed his door. We are the ones who close our doors to God. Allah is open, Allah is speaking to human beings. Some listen, some don't. There are some who listen all the time. And Imam is a masoom person whose heart is open. And Imam was guiding him. Just as his brother, Imam, Imam, Imam Sayyid al-Shuhada alayhi salam, he made the decisions all by the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reasons and philosophy that we present, <coughs> right, is for beginners. So people who want to rationalize things. For a believer who knows the need for an Imam on earth, he knows that an Imam is a person who acts by the order of Allah. He, so you basically follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because, because the orders and commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are to be obeyed. Whether they have a philosophy or they don't have a philosophy. Ibrahim alayhi salam when he was ordered by Allah when he saw the dream that he was going to go and slaughter his son. Right? He was slaughtering his son. He saw that in his dream. Didn't he know that this is the, the, my, you know, the nasl of Nubuvat and Imamas will be through this son? Didn't he know that? He prayed, he made, you know, O oh Allah, Ummatan Muslimatan. You know, he prayed that from future, there should be a Ummat Muslima from me. He prayed this when he was building Kaaba. But Allah ordered, he saw in his dream, he's ordered, slaughtering his son. What did he say? Did he ask Allah, Oh Allah, are you asking me to kill my son who is going to be the forefather of all the future, the last prophet of Allah and the Imam? He didn't say that. He saw in his dream, he complied. He went. Allah knows what he was doing. When he went, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Qad saddaqtar ru'ya. Ibrahim, you have fulfilled your promise. What you saw in your dream, you did it. We, saw, we know your intention. We know your yaqeen, we know your conviction. It is based on his conviction, ruya. You had the niyat to obey the orders. And that is it. In some riwayat, we find that uh, Ibrahim salam was feeling sad that he could not slaughter his son. Maybe there was something in his niyat why it was not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, the, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Ibrahim. Ibrahim, do you love your son more or do you love the son of the last prophet that I will send? You know? He said, I, will, I love your last prophet more than I love my son. And his son is more dear to me than my own son. Then Allah told Ibrahim alayhi salam, what will happen to the son, grandson of holy prophet, Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And Ibrahim cried on that. That is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
replace this sacrifice of Ibrahim salam with a bigger sacrifice which was the shahadat of Imam Mazlum salam later on all the Imams acted by the order of Allah Sayyid al-Shuhada I'm just wrapping up Sayyid al-Shuhada when he was leaving Medina he did not leave on his own they demanded bayat from Imam Imam gave them the response that we are Ahlul Bayt al-Nubuwa we are the family of Nubuwat right but that night he was in Medina at the Haram all night that next day he was in Medina the following night back at the Haram of Rasulullah all night praying all night until close to Sahar when he put his head on the cover of Rasulullah that's when he saw Rasulullah coming down on earth surrounded by angels malaik you know and he he took Imam Hussain al-Islam in his arms and he said as the account summarizing it that the, the ummah has disobeyed us they have left us turned their backs on us and the prophet said Hussain my Hussain Ali and Fatima and all are waiting for you you have a great rank before Allah Sayyidu Shahada said, Grandfather to Rasulullah, I don't want to go back to the dunya. I want to go with you. I have no need to go back to dunya. Rasulullah said, The rank Allah has kept for you, you will achieve it through your shahadat. And that was the. And then the Prophet said to Imam Hussain to go, to leave. That's when, that morning, Imam Hussain left Medina. All the Imams acted by the order of Allah. This should, the debate around who said, who, what Imam did, which action, why he did this, why did this, is for people who don't understand this fact. Their belief is weak. They don't understand what Imamat is. If they know what Imamat is, they read the khutbah of Imam Raza about Imamat that he gave in Marv. You will know that it is not a matter for you and I to question and ask why this happened, why that happened. The action of Imam itself is hujjat. Because he did it, you have to follow. You don't say why he's fighting, why the other Imam is signing a truce. You know? That's how the a person, a Shia means a believe a follower. Shia is a follower. Shia follows the leader. Shia doesn't question. There are other people, you know, who who believe in some sort of democracy and they say, No, we we why should Allah appoint anyone of us? We we choose from ours, ourselves. We elect a person. Right? Well, if that was the case, the Holy Prophet of Islam would not have done what he did in Ghadir Khum. At the Ghadir Khum, the Holy Prophet did not ask the people, How many of you would like to have Ali as your Imam? Raise your hand, for example. He did not ask people to tell him what they feel. He said, Man kuntu maulahu. Fahada Aliyun Maulahu Allahumma Wale Man Maulahu. Even if no one would have come to give bayat, he said, Man kuntum Maulahu. Whoever I am the master of, this Ali is his master. Wallah, Wale Man Maulahu. Whoever is behind Ali, you be his wali. Who is against Ali, you be his enemy too. That's it. Declaration. Announcement and declaration. Nas. It was not election. Imamat is not a position to be elected. No one gets elected for Imamat. And Imamat is leadership. Khilafat is part of Imamat. Khilafat is part of... And the duty of the people is not to elect the Imam. The duty of the people is to support the Imam. Because a person of a higher rank of knowledge, a lay person does not know his worth, does not know his, his caliber. People, you know, general people, even in everyday life, if you are not belong, you don't belong to a field, you don't know. If you are not a doctor yourself, you don't know what kind of a doctor that is. It's not written on his face, is it? Doctors know what, uh, which one is the higher, you know, more experienced than uh, doctor. You know? Among the al khibra among the mujtahideen, the top mujtahideen would know which one is worthy of becoming a leader of the ummah. It's not your job and my job to think about why they selected him. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadat? I think I hear the sound of adhan. Is it adhan? Okay, inshallah Allah accept this ibadat. And taqabbalallah amalakum salawat. Wow.